All right, guys, so uh, now I'm going to show you uh, some quick JavaScript we can add onto our Ripple button so that we can get the full material design effect with it. Um, so again, the cool thing is like if you watch the last video, um, we've made a Ripple button with just some CSS here. Um, problem is it doesn't move around uh, like it does in the other one. So we're going to get it to look. I'll show you how I got it to do this here. Uh, it's very simple. Um, again, I'm using React here. Uh, you do not need to use React. I will point out the Reacty things that you need to know if you are using React, but otherwise this is all achieved with just vanilla JavaScript, okay? So I'm attaching, uh, the first thing to know, I'm attaching a non-click here. And if you're using uh, vanilla JavaScript, we can pretty much just use this ripple function that we're going to uh, go over here. Um, but if you're using React, there's probably one little helper function you're gonna use here. So I made an on-click function here. Um, obviously, this is just a simple functional component. Uh, so I, you know, if you, you could put on your your component class if you're making a class. Um, but this is just a simple function here. It's a curried function, which means that it's a function that returns another function uh, because we're using partial application here. And what I basically mean by that is that you're probably, if you're especially if you're using React, you're going to be passing in a on-click function that you actually want the button to do. It's nice that we're having it ripple, but we had to actually do something, right? So on your props, you're probably gonna have a uh, on-click function. And what that's basically going to do, uh, our on-click is going to take in that on-click function and uh, save it within this inner function and return this function, which is actually the function that's going to get invoked here okay so you can see here that the inner function it takes in an event like a like a normal on click handler does and it does two things uh one of the things is it checks to see if we've given it a uh, on click function if we have it will call that function with the event uh the next thing is we have this ripple uh, and we're passing an e.native event and the reason we're doing that is because we want uh to make our ripple happen but the problem is the uh, Ripple uses uh, the normal DOM uh, event object. What React uses is synthetic events. So therefore, it's kind of like wrapping the actual native event, which is why to gain access to the native event, we can just simply do this in React. Okay, so um, I'm passing to my Ripple the actual uh, native event from the DOM. Uh, if you're not using React and you had no idea what I just said, don't worry about it. All you need to know is that we're going to make a Ripple function which takes in an event and you can just attach it like normal with jQuery or vanilla JavaScript. All right, so onto the Ripple itself. Um, let me just console log here. Okay. Um, so I'm going to log out this event here just so we can see what's going on. Okay, so... You see, every time I click, we get an event here and it's got lots of fun stuff here, but the thing we're interested in is offset X and Y. And what that basically is, is the coordinates of your mouse from the target element, okay? Um, so you'll notice here that if I um, move this down here and I log out mid X and mid Y, which is E.offset e offset X and E.offset Y, um, you'll see that I'm actually getting some coordinates here. And remember, it's the padding edge. So if I click up here in the border, it's going to give me some negative coordinates, which is kind of weird, but uh, it will still work nonetheless. Okay. Uh, so we've got our coordinates for where our mouse is, which is perfect because when you think about it, our mouse should be uh, in the center of where that um, ripple was, right? So we want to move the ripple around. And the way we do that is first, we need to refactor some things. Instead of using a pseudo element for our ripple, uh, we're gonna use an actual uh, element and I've chosen to use a span here, give it a class name of ripple. Um, and the reason we're doing that is because it's really, really hard to edit the styles using JavaScript of pseudo elements, right? So just to be on the, uh, for, for ease here, we're gonna add a span here. And therefore in my CSS, I've refactored, instead of using an after element, we're using a uh, selector to get that ripple, okay? Uh, so we still have the ripple effect and to get that movement that you see here, um, we're going to, uh, every time we click, we're gonna use those offset coordinates to calculate the top and left. So you're seeing what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing the ripple element itself by doing e.target.querySelector. So what I'm saying is the, the target of the event, which would be the button element, 
I'm going to query its children for the first element that is the has the dot ripple class. Um, and again, this is just vanilla JavaScript. So I'm saving that in here, which I should actually change to that so we don't conflict there. Okay. And the way you can edit a uh, style property on an element is simply by assigning stuff to the, the elements.style property, which is an object. And uh, since we're going to be um, doing multiple things here, not only is it easier, but we also don't want to overwrite uh, stuff here. So I'm, I'm instead of doing it line by line here, I'm actually using object.assign. So it's basically assigning any styles in this styles object that I've created to the ripple.style object, okay? So in this case, I'm taking a top and a left, which is the top and left property, style property, and I have to add some uh, string interpolation here because we need to add the px at the end, right? Because we need to stand for pixels. Otherwise, the browser won't recognize it as a valid um, uh, property, okay? So we're basically getting the offsets of the x and y and we're setting it to the top and left, and that's pretty much all you need to do. So the ripple's gonna move around, and again, because we've centered it uh, on its uh, uh, axis, so to speak, um, the top and left, just like that, will dictate where the center of the ripple is. So that's pretty cool. So just like that, not a whole lot, just this little function will give us that um, functionality there of moving the ripple around. Now, if you want to get really crazy and go full hog here, <laughs> um, you can, uh, this is something I stole from Paul Lewis. He's an awesome guy. You should check out all his, his stuff on Google. Uh, but basically what real Google material design ripples do is not only do they move around, but they also always fill up. So you see, I've uncommented this code. You see, even though I'm clicking here, my ripple will go all the way out and make sure it covers the entire button no matter where I'm clicking. And basically what it's doing is instead of using the height and width of the element of the ripple that we've declared in the, SC, in the CSS here as four M's, we're setting it every time, um, which is, you know, again, it, the thing about what I'm showing you here is you can go in layers, right? You can do just CSS, you can just have it move around or you can go all the way, right? And so basically, I'll just walk you through this real quick. Um, what we're doing here to basically calculate the size or the radius of the circle is pretty cool. So what we're doing is we're getting the target element, okay? And we're getting its uh, uh, bounding client rect. And what that basically gives you is some properties about its size, including the width and height, okay? So we've got the width and the height here of the, um, the button, okay? And what we're doing here, I'll, I'll go over this in a second, but basically uh, we're calculating the radius from that, uh, from the, uh, either the pointer of your, where your mouse is, or from the height and width minus the offset. And I'll explain that in a second, but um, this is, all you need to know is that this uh, equation here is basically giving us the radius of our circle. And therefore I can do width and height is the radius times two, right? And remember, because of the way we're setting the styles here in this particular example, the way I've done it, um, we have to calculate for the margin left and margin top. So we're setting the width and height to two times the radius. And then we have to do a margin left and margin top of negative half the width and height, which is in this case, just the radius, okay? And so let me just show you here if I, um, oh, I won't bother counting out, but basically, so what you can see now is that it's, what it's basically doing is it's calculating, all right, how big does this ripple need to be to make sure that the, uh, the radius extends all the way from wherever my mouse clicks to the end of the, uh, the, the farthest end, right? So what it's what's this part's doing here is it's saying, um, all right, so if, if the mouse is all the way to the left, right, we have to make sure that the, the ripple, even though it's very close to the left side, right, we need to make sure the ripple is big enough to stand all the way to the right. So it's seeing, okay, which what's, what's the farther distance here? The distance uh, from my mouse to the edge to this edge or the, the mouse to that edge, right? Because remember the offset 
uh, is calculated from the top left corner. So it's basically picking as your mouse uh, farther to the right or farther to the left is basically what that's doing. Um, so if you didn't understand that, uh, it's probably okay. Um, but basically just know that we're calculating the radius here so that uh, regardless of where you click, the ripple will always be just big enough to reach all the corners when it dissipates, okay? So that's it, guys. Again, I will post um, a link to a gist in the uh, description uh, so you can check this out. Um, you know, feel free to play around with it, add some more stuff. If you come up with something cool, please share it and let me know in the comments below first for everyone to see. Um, and yeah, that's about it. <laughs>